Hey, welcome to Golden Scratch. So, uh, about a month ago, I made a video about rocker arms. And for that video, I took one measurement. I measured uh, the lift at full open of the, at the center line of the, uh, of the camshaft lobe compared to the base circle and compared that to the lift at the lobe. And I published a whole bunch of information. I took probably hundreds of measurements before I did that. Uh, and I published information in terms of which rocker arms. I tested, uh, I think, about six rocker arms. And I published some information which one had the best uh, rocker arm ratio compared to uh, the advertised ratio. So uh, just to demonstrate, first of all, before we get started on that, so rocker arm ratio is pretty simple. There's a rocker arm. This is a 1.5, a GM 1.5 rocker arm, okay? So let's assume... That's the center line of the pivot, the rotation. So if that distance from there to the push rod is one inch, the distance to the valve itself is 1.5 inches, and that's how you get 1.5. So for most uh, North American vehicles, the ratio usually is something like 1.5, 1 1.6. Uh, Pontiacs have 1.7s, big blocks have 1.75s or more. Uh, but we're working on today for our, our uh, demonstration purposes, a small block. So we have a bunch of 1.5 rock arms and 1.6 rock arms. So if, that, if you found that one interesting, you're going to find this video a lot more helpful. Because instead of taking one measurement at maximum lift, I'm going to take 14 measurements right from when the valve cracks open until we get to the center line of the lobe of the camshaft where we have maximum lift. I take all 14 of those measurements and average them to determine the average lift over the full cycle from valve opening all the way. And I'm going to give you a demonstration how to do that, how I do that. And you can do it yourself if you want to check my numbers. So the relevation is, is, pretty, is pretty important because uh, I think it's pretty consistent. If you want to see the information about the first one, we'll put a link to the other video. Uh, on, on uh, rocker arms and to this one. And you can go back and compare the results of that to this these results. So just to get to the bottom line, we'll show you how we got there. If you have a stock stamp steel rocker arm, 1.5 rocker arm that you take out of a small block shed, which is a million of them around there, and just put on a good roller tip rocker arm, roller rocker arm, you will gain 23 thousandths of an inch lift Averaged for the full cycle from when the valve comes off the seat until you get to the center line of the lobe of the camshaft. If you go to a 1.6 rocker arm, you'll gain 46 thousandths of an inch. That's a lot, and that's like two camshaft sizes in terms of lift. So it's pretty, pretty relevant and pretty important. So I'm going to first uh, next demonstrate how we got these numbers just to, uh, uh, to uh, give it my... My measurements or my, my, uh, what I'm publishing, uh, some credibility because I'm, I'm really concerned about making sure that if I publish information that it's correct. So for every uh, number that I provided, just like in the previous one, I took three independent tests and I averaged them together. The variation was very small, but I averaged them together to make sure the results are credible. And they're pretty consistent and pretty meaningful. We got a chart which we're going to show you here in a minute, uh, which shows you which rock arms are the best and which are the worst and how much difference it is. But next we'll demonstrate uh, how we get the results. So here's our little jig setup. First of all, as I mentioned in the previous video, I use a solid valve lifter. If you don't use a solid valve lifter, the valve lifter will collapse with the spring pressure and you'll never get a meaningful uh, measurement. So we use my dial indicator. I got it set at TDC. So the camshaft in this engine, uh, the valve starts to open on the, the cam specs at minus at 26 degrees before top dead center. So I start measuring at 20 degrees before top dead center. Here's a little chart that we're going to use. We're going to start 20 degrees before top dead center, 10 before top dead center, at top dead center, and every 10 degrees, 106 is the center line of this camshaft. We're going to measure the lift at 106 degrees and take the average of that, how much lift there is, compared to prior to that, I did this exactly the same thing with 
just on the lobe of the camshaft without the rocker arm in place. So I have the base case, how much average lift it was. Compare that and it'll, it'll give you what the rocker arm ratio was. So let's just, for demonstration purposes, try to show you one, uh, one example. So I've got the, the, my degree wheel set up here and I know this camshaft starts to lift the valve at, at, by, at 26 degrees. So there I am, it's about 26 degrees now. And the dial indicator, uh, first of all, the dial indicator was zero. Let's make sure we got it at zero. Okay, so there's just coming off the seat. So if I take a measurement at 20 degrees, there's 20 degrees. So, and that is 20 thou. That's O two O. Okay, that's minus 20 degrees. In other words, we're not at top dead center. We're going up to top dead center. Go to 10 degrees. And now we have 65 thou. And another one at TDC. And we have 116 thou. So, not to bore you with all the rest of the details, but for every number that I'm publishing, I did the whole thing all the way down to the center line of the camshaft three times, and then I took an average of them before I published the information. So let's just quickly jump ahead and go all the way around. You can, we see the rocker arm pushing the valve down. The, the uh, rotating my engine a little bit. Okay, and we're gonna go right until 106, 106 degrees. There's 100, and maximum is right about there. So there we go. So that would give you, that would give you the ratio, sorry, which is 509 thou at 106. So the base, this is a 318 thousandths lift at the at the camshaft, 509 thousandths lift at the valve. Uh, with with this rocker arm. This happens to be the blue scorpion, which was the best uh, rocker arm. So drop my tool here. Sorry about that. So uh, first of all, next I think what I should do is explain which rocker arms we used for this test. So as in the past, I got a, I have a few new ones from the original test. There's a GM 1.5. This is the rocker arm that comes on a ZZ6 uh, or a um, or a crate motor, 602 crate motor. This is the exact same rocker arm, only it's a 1.6 ratio. This is also a 1.6 rocker arm, PRV, PRW, sorry. And it's a roller tip rocker arm, but it's not roller at the trunnion. Uh, this is a crane rocker arm, it's a 1.6 as well. This is a crane 1.5. I actually bought a melling, one online and bought a me one melling rocker arm an aftermarket rock arm just to see how it did. And it did pretty darn good, by the way. You'll see in the results compared to a stamp steel rocker arm. What's not in here because I sent it back to the owner. I also had three rocker arms off a 602 crate motor that I tested as well. Two different motors I used. Did three rock arms and I got the results from that. And there's uh, our poor cousin, the stamp steel rock arm, uh, OEM rock arm that came off of a... Uh, some small block chev somewhere in my past I can't even remember right now. So those are the rock arms that we tested. Here is the results. We'll show you on the chart the results that we have. So I can point to that. So the best way of demonstrating the difference is what the average lift at the valve is uh, compared to the average lift at the cam. And I know what the average lift at the cam. The average lift at the cam actually ended up being 0.195. So the Blue Scorpion again, which is the one on the engine, ended up being the best as well. This is in the 1.6 uh, rock arms. It ended up being the best. So it had an average lift of 314 thou, just as I demonstrated rate right from cracking the valve open to the center line of the uh, lobe of the camshaft. The GM Performance 1.6 rock arm, this one right here, was 0 0.309, was the next best. The PRW, PRW was the next best at 0 0.308. As you can see, the difference is not a lot in, in terms of all the 1.6s. 
and the crane 1.6 was 0.302. So there's only really, there's a 12 thou difference. If, so comparing the best 1.5 rocker arm to the, to the, I guess to use the term worst, it's 12 thou difference. Then we go to the 1.5 rocker arms, the crate rocker arm, which is, I don't have in this view here right now, but I had three of them and I tested all three of them. Uh, it was 0.291. Don't oh, forget, this is a 1.5 ratio rocker arm, not a 1.6. Next was GM Performance 1.5, which did better than it did on the other test when we just took one measurement. Okay. The Crane 1.5, which is this guy right here, was 0.285. The Melling that I bought just for this test was 0.283. So, for every video, I like to provide some information that's meaningful. So I think here's the punchline for you. If you have the OEM stamp rocker arm at 0.268, okay, average, compared to even a good uh, roller rocker arm that's still 1.5, you're 23 thou, you're missing out on 23 thou of average lift over the full cycle from where the valve comes off the seat to the center line of the camshaft. If you take an engine where you have a stamp rocker arm and put on the best rocker arm, the difference is if you add these two together, it's or subtract 314 from here to the 268, the best and the worst, is 0 0.046. That's almost 50 thousandths of an inch difference in average lift over the entire uh, cycle from when the valve cracks open till it gets to the center line. That's like two camshaft sizes, and I think that's pretty darn, pretty darn relevant. So. Okay, so uh, once again, uh, I got to give credit to someone who watches my videos, Dave Russell, who made a suggestion that rocker arm ratio isn't just important at uh, maximum lift, that the ratio actually changes over the whole cycle. And that gave me the idea to do this project where I actually measured, uh, once again, took 14 measurements from minus 20 degrees up to TDC, to 100 and 106, which is the center line of this camshaft, and took all 14 of those measurements, averaged them out, compared them to the average lift at the camshaft lobe. I did exactly the same thing at the camshaft lobe. Uh, can't demonstrate that readily right now, but that's what I did. And uh, the average lift at the camshaft lobe was 0.196, I believe. And take that ratio, average it out, and once again, the punchline is, if you have the very best rocker arm versus the very worst, you have 46 thousandths of an inch more valve lift uh, at the valve through the entire cycle of your cam all the way up and, of course, all the way back down as well. So I hope you found that uh, interesting. Um, I did. Uh, I was a little bit surprised by it, to be honest. I've heard lots of comments saying it, roller rocker arms don't help. They don't help from the point of view of the friction probably doesn't make a lot of difference, but uh, the accurate ratio and the extra lift will make a difference. So I think it will be valuable. So um, next, by the way, uh, since my cameraman's right there, there's a Pontiac 400 on my, on my test stand. Uh, this is Wednesday and Saturday. We're going to the dyno with that engine. We recently uh, did a video where we, um, uh, made a change where we took uh, to add dynamic compression. We took the heads off and uh, put thinner head gaskets and I advanced the cam four degrees. So we now gain from 140 to 170 PSI of compression pressure. And we're going to find out on Saturday on the dyno how much that's going to help in terms of horsepower. We have a base case. We have dynoed this engine before. So we're going to know uh, what it's going to be uh, with those two changes. So uh, I'm interested to see results. I um, hope you are too. So, so thank you for watching Gold's Garage. Please like and subscribe. We're getting encouraged here and we're trying to improve the quality of our videos and provide information that you might not find somewhere else. And we always make sure that information that we provide is accurate. So uh, that's very important to me. So thank you for watching Gold's Garage and we'll see you on the next one.